Uh, so this is uh, an exterminator. Uh, he'll be a new enemy in uh, Silver Falls uh, Guardians and Metal Exterminators. So uh, when working on, on this fellow here, um, I use a, a drawing tablet. This is a Wacom drawing tablet. I'm going to have to get used to the latency here. Um, so I, I use a couple different Wacom tablets. This is an Intuos 4. It's a couple years old, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's a pretty great device. Uh, this lets me draw directly onto the screen. It's got pressure sensitivity, tilt sensitivity. Uh, I especially in, uh, really like the Intuos uh, because um, you can customize the buttons here on the side. So um, you can have them uh, be macro keys or a, a, a series of keys. Uh, and they'll really let you sort of uh, get into a flow with certain programs, especially when you're doing sculpting um, or even just 2D uh, artwork. Uh, it has this wheel here that sort of lets you, you can sort of, you can see um, I'm sort of zooming in and out to the creature as I move the wheel, but you can also have it do other things. There's a, there's a shortcut key in the middle that changes what that wheel does. You can use that wheel to change the brush size as well, so you can work uh, pretty fast. And when you're wa working on this stuff, you want to get into a groove. Um, I generally use two different uh, styluses when I'm uh, working on an Intuos tablet. Uh, the reason being uh, is uh, that um, I have different nibs on the stylus. Can you can you guys hear me all right? Is that working all right? Hope you guys can hear me all right. Um, and the different nibs let you do different things. So I've got um, uh, a, a nib on this stylus. Uh, which has more friction. So uh, if I'm doing line work or work that I don't want the pen to be um, flying across the surface quickly, I generally use this one. It has more friction on it, uh, and that lets me have more control over what's going on when I'm drawing on the surface. And then I generally have a second stylus, which uh, if I'm coloring in art or I want the stylus to move faster, then it's got a plastic nib, uh, which moves across the surface a, a lot faster. So this drawing tablet, um, this one uh, doesn't have the screen on it. I have a secondary one, uh, which is this fella here. Um, what model is this one? Uh, this is a, a Cintiq uh, 13, so I guess it's 13 uh, inch diameter. So same sort of deal. Uh, it's a drawing tablet, but this one has the screen on there. So... Um, you can you can see what you're drawing on there. So if you're doing line art and coloring, generally that's uh, much better for that because uh, it's it's hard, really hard to do line art if you can't see what's going on. But I really like using these styluses for 3D modeling. Um, so uh, we're just gonna get right into it here. So what's what's really good about these is is um, the Alt, Control, and Shift key are on the tablet, so that lets you um, sort of navigate your your um, workspace so you can rotate and, and move the workspace. Is, is the audio coming through all right? Is the audio okay? Okay. Let me have a look at my OBS here. Yeah, my audio levels seem to be okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so... Uh, Awesome, cool, thanks for joining this, the uh, stream here. So for this particular part, I'm gonna be working on the finer details of this fella. So I'm gonna use uh, my stylus that has the, the tip with more friction on it because I actually want to be able to um, control very fine details. Where when I'm doing huge bits, like I'm, I'm extending the tendrils, I use the other stylus because it moves uh, faster and more smoothly. Um, so when I'm making a, a creature, I like to imagine sort of what, if it has a bone structure, what sort of bone structure it's supposed to have. I like to imagine um, where its vertebrae would be connected and what, you know, where its ribs, where its legs. Uh, and, and by imagining the sort of the, where the bones connect, I sort of uh, lump on um, muscle mass on top of that. Uh, uh, let's see here. Okay. So I, I want to define the vertebrae of it because this guy, he's still a little bit chunky. And as, as a rule of thumb, uh, things that are chunky tend to be cute. I don't know if you can imagine like a, a cute chunky dog or a, a 
cat or an owl. Uh, they're adorable because they're chunky um, or fluffy. Uh, whereas when things are uh, gaunt, they tend to elicit a, a, a sort of a, a primal uh, reaction uh, of a bit of um, fear and weariness. So um, as I use this tool, I'm using Sculptress uh, to show um, people Sculptress because it's, it's free. Anyone can use it. Um, it's quite old. Um, you can use a more advanced program like ZBrush and whatnot, uh, but there's a, a pricing uh, thing to that. And if, if you weren't uh, looking to, to pay for a 3D modeling program, especially if you just want to try it to see if it works for you, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to try free programs to see if they work for you because I think the same team that makes um, Sculptress uh, move, moved on to ZBrush or the, the same... That company uh, does ZBrush. So if you do want to find, you want to take your work um, further and you want more features and, and a more modern program, then uh, you can use uh, ZBrush. But Sculptures is free. You can download it right now. It's quite fun. Um, and then later on, uh, uh, we'll look at uh, the system that we built for Silver Falls characters because we uh, built a framework so for all our upcoming games that have Silver Falls characters, um, we use a, a system that, uh, that sort of lets us save on work. So we do the work making the characters and formatting them so they can have facial expressions and whatnot once. And then after that, we sort of um, can copy and paste them from game to game and not have to reprogram them again each time. So I'm just sort of uh, trying to make these make a little more sense. So what I'm doing is I'm using the draw tool uh, with invert. You can see it's subdividing it quite a bit. Uh, it's adding a ton of, of uh, polygons there, but that's very easy. Later on, we'll use the re reduce uh, brush tool, and then we can have a finer control over it. Um, I'll just show you an example right here. That's, you know, that's, oops, I've inverted that. Let's go ahead and um, uh, hit that like that. And then we'll, so you can see that we can uh, get rid of those polygons. So it makes it very easy to control which part of your sculpt has the detail that you need while other areas that don't need as much detail you can uh, make sure that it'll run well on whatever uh, whatever game you're putting this fella into so you have the draw again I'm going to go to invert I'm just sort of uh, sculpting out these vertebra a bit and then I'm going to make them more sinewy here all righty Oh, there's humming on the on the on the phone. Uh, sorry about that. I'll try and look into it. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing that, but I'll I'll try and and fix it for next time. Uh, so let's see here. Okay. So um. Uh. For the folks in the stream, what what new games are you guys playing? Because I actually haven't got to make uh, play many new games. So now I'm just sort of. <laughs> resorting to to hearing what other games people are playing what other games people are playing and enjoying and when i if i happen to get a chance a couple hours here or there um you know i'll try and grab uh, a game and play it a bit but like i i'm a a massive uh i grew up playing final fantasy 7 i haven't even played the final fantasy 7 remake which sounds insane if you had gone to the teenage version of me and told me that there would be a remake of final fantasy 7 then i wouldn't get to play it uh, I would say that you're insane, you're a crazy person, but I haven't played that. I haven't played um, the Link's Awakening uh, remake, and that's, I think Link's Awakening is probably my favorite Zelda. So, yeah, I'm mostly uh, trying to get, trying to get this, uh, these Silver Falls games done. Unfortunately, there's, there's been some delays. It's been a really, really crazy year. Uh, and everyone's sort of everyone's had extra challenges this year so I've just uh, had to put in a bit of extra time working on this series to get these games out so um, I accidentally touched a tendril but that's fine it's not a big deal so here what I'm doing is um, just adding a bit of mass here but right now I'm finding that this this nib uh, has a bit too much friction now because I'm done working on the smaller 
uh, aspect. So I'm switching to the, the smoother tip here because I want to work on uh, the larger parts to this fellow here. Uh, let's see, like that. And you can see I'm able to move the, the pointer a lot faster. So he's getting a little bit too uh, muscular back there. Uh, and his knees are quite amorphous, aren't they? So I'm sort of looking at this thing, and that, that bit looks funny to me because there's not a, lot of, not a lot of definition in there. And in general, like if you look at a, a comic work from someone like Junji Ito, you sort of understand the concept that the more detail you have, uh, the more visually connected to something reality is, and the more upsetting it something becomes uh, if there's too much detail, but the detail lines up in a way that isn't um, pleasant to the eye. Uh, you can uh, elicit a sense of, of, of horror as a visual response to that. So I'm going to fill this area out by imagining, like, if it had, you know, for example, calf muscles uh, and whatnot. So what I'm going to do now is use the... Um, well, I'm not sure if I, if I want to use the draw and invert or crease here, but I'll, I'll crease actually, and I'll start defining um, a knee joint here. So this is probably a little too... Um, Dial that down. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have to smoothen that out a bit. Uh, what I'll do here, now I'm trying to imagine uh, what the knee uh, joint uh, would look like on this weird imaginary creature that we're making. And I'll smoothen that out, okay? Now I want to imagine that there would be uh, some sort of a tendon that would run from there to there to make it uh, visually make sense. So right now there isn't uh, anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll sort of uh, size like that. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, try to imagine a tendril here like this. Uh, and I try to imagine what sort of details would, would just be too much. You wouldn't want to see uh, so much detail on a creature, and that's what I I try to aim for is um, having so much detail that it's just not really that nice to look at, which is um, what you should strive for with with a monster design. Because the the when you have detail in a in a creature, um, it forces people to uh, relate whatever creature they're looking at. It forces people to relate that to uh, their life experiences, you know, what people are familiar with. And if you have all of these details uh, presented in such a way and in, in such a combination that it, it makes it difficult for people to relate to, yet they can relate to it uh, in some respect, I think that's what makes an effective creature design. Let me undo that. I, I think of things like... Um, for example, John Carpenter's The Thing, what year was that, 82, um, 83? Um, and I, oh, I love watching that movie. And it's, I think it's, it's so effective because, let me inflate this, um, there's, there's so much detail in the monsters and the detail just, they don't add up in a way that makes sense in your brain. And that's such a visceral response that people don't really have a way to cope with uh, the the upsetting strangeness of the the creatures in uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, and I, that's why I enjoy watching it because it it's effective, uh, and you don't need CGI, you don't need uh, you know super fancy modern stuff. That that stuff was made in eighty two or eighty three, and it it looks brilliant because the philosophy behind the monster design just makes a lot of sense. Go ahead and save that. Let's see, you're playing uh, Vitamin Connection on the Switch when the controls are on. Okay. Maybe I'll turn off, I'll try turning off my air conditioner and see if that, does that help with the buzzing sound there? And uh, I suppose I'll just uh, get very sweaty. Vitamin Connection on the Switch. Hmm. Hmm.
Have you played Super Metroid before, or are you you sort of uh, jumping into it for the first time? The, the Metroid I've played the most was uh, Metroid Fusion on uh, GBA, and oh man, that's the atmosphere in, in those 2D Metroid games. It's really fantastic. Uh, so right now I'm trying to fill out the muscle mass, and I'm going to try and make it uh, more sinewy. So I'm making uh, muscles, what I'm imagining is under the surface. I'm going ahead and invert, and then I'm just going to reduce the brush size here. And we'll go ahead and just try and, excuse me, define some. See, that to me is sticking out too much there. So uh, let's go ahead and brush too big, like that. There we go. Uh. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Oh, you know, I really wanted to play Persona 5 as well, but um, again, it's, it's just a matter of time, and I'm thinking in, in the future I'll have more time, but Persona 5 is one game I'd really like to play, especially after they got Joker and Smash, and I'm, I'm quite into the smashing of the bros, and Joker's such a cool character, and I thought, oh, that looks like a game I'd probably enjoy. Um, yeah, first, Les, um, you'd ask, yeah, uh, having too much detail uh, will make it very difficult for your, your game to render. Uh, you can see, I think there's 395,000 triangles here, which is too many. Um, there's a tool here called the Reduce Brush, uh, and what the reduce brush lets you do is, uh, let's see here, I have the invert ticked there. Let's go ahead and, and take that out. So with the reduce brush, you can actually see that you can manually control uh, your uh, number of, of uh, the amount of, of poly polygonal detail you have in a particular area. Uh, you can see as, as I run this along the, I'll just do this uh, without even really paying attention to where I'm going. Um, you can see that number decreasing as I run the reduce brush. So uh, for now, I'm not worrying about that. That's usually um, towards the end of my sculpt. I'll go through it with the reduce brush. Uh, but for now, I'm just focusing on, on uh, the details and visually uh, making this thing look like what I've uh, imagined and what I've envisioned. Uh, so that's quite an easy step to deal with. That's something that you can do uh, later on. You can do it a couple times in the middle of the sculpt. Um, sometimes I will in the middle of my sculpt. I'll, I'll do that. So again, if you're not familiar with this program, it's called Sculptress. It's free. Anyone can grab it. Um, I think it's made from the people that make ZBrush, which is a, a kind of an industry, industry standard. Sculptress is free. Anyone can use it. It's quite easy to use, uh, and it's very fun to use. So uh, the grab tool is actually quite useful as well. Like I can, I can sort of see that, that leg mass is a bit too forward. So what I want to do is um, grab it a bit like that. There we go. And uh, there we go. And the reason why these tendrils are sort of sticking out so far right now is uh, I've got an idea of how I'm going to rig this monster. So rigging is the process of uh, sticking it into a, a 3D program uh, that lets you create a bone structure for it. And so I've, I try to keep the tendrils separate from each other so I can make it uh, easier for me to rig later on. Uh, the farther apart they are and the, mo the straighter they are, it'll make it easier to rig. Um, so what I will do is I'll use my draw tool again. I'll invert it, and I want this area to look more sinewy here, like that. Uh, there we go. And again, there's pressure sensitivity with if you use a drawing tablet uh, like the Wacom. Uh, there's um, pressure sensitivity. Yeah, it does look uh, a bit human uh, with the monster's uh, legs a bit. Um, that's a design philosophy uh, that I try to stick to with the Silver Falls monsters is that uh, they aren't necessarily just like a ooh how, how outlandish and crazy can can I make this monster it's I, I want the certain parts of the monster to be uh, recognizable in a way that that makes you think you you can kind of recognize uh, part of it like oh that that part of the monster sort of looks like this or sort of looks like that but overall, the, the overall, um, all of the, the details of the monster put together don't make sense 
but parts of it look like something you would recognize. Um, and having having a sort of a visual relatability where people can relate to things, um, I think, is an important part of creature design. Because if someone can't identify something just by looking at it, um, they don't really connect to it. And then they you sort of subconsciously give up trying to understand something. Uh, and when it comes to creature design, this is my personal philosophy. I'm not like a, a creature design doctor. Um, but I feel like if someone tries to understand something, um, they'll spend more time thinking about it. And it's more upsetting um, when they subconsciously accept defeat in that they know that they won't be able to understand something. And it's, it's the fact that they've spent time trying to understand something uh, it's that like sort of time investment that makes it more meaningful. Um, like for example, um, if you've watched John Carpenter's um, The Thing, when when you get to the dog transforming scene and you think, oh, okay, I, I kind of get that. I, I get that it's a dog and then it starts transforming more and more and it just gets more and more upsetting uh, as the scene goes on. And I think um, that's like a perfect example of Oh, now now it's upsetting because you thought you understood it, but now you you're looking at the whole thing and you really don't. It's not just a dog; it's some sort of weird, weird thing. Um, so I, I try to make certain parts of my creatures look like they could be a human limb, or or something that you think you might recognize. So um, I might I like to have a wireframe on because I can tell um, how much detail is in a particular area. But for now, I'll turn it off because it's actually a bit distracting now. It's getting in the way of of uh, looking at my sculpt. You know what? I, I love uh, creepy pastas. Not necessarily just creepy pastas, but you know, people making YouTube videos uh, and Wendigo stories. I love that stuff. Um, it's fun to see people put their own uh, little spins on it um, when they're telling stories about Wendigos and and other similar sort of cryptids. But yeah, I love that stuff. You know, if it's if it's late at night, um, I'll probably put a couple of, of those kind of YouTube videos on. I love hearing Wendigo stories. I like seeing people's artwork about the Wendigo. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm kind of happy with the detail there. I'm not sure I might come in with normal maps later and I might try to make things more veiny uh, because again, the amount of detail that something has, um, you can get to a point where when there's, there's so much detail, it can actually be quite upsetting to look at, which is generally what you want with a creature design that's meant to elicit a sense of horror. So I'm gonna give this guy like a, let's give it this thing here, give it a couple more. Because these tendrils are, uh, I, I want the tendrils to be uh, uh, visually connected to the body. I don't want them just oopsies. That doesn't look quite right. Uh, I want the the body to make sense and not just have the tendrils look like they're sticking out for the fun of it. I want them to look like they're connected with veins and sinew, uh, which will make them upsetting to look at, I think. So we'll do, do a bit like that. We'll connect it there like that. And again, we can uh, smoothen out details uh, and we can uh, reduce the poly count later on as well as, as we've seen the detail of. So I think that's already sort of uh, upsetting to look at, um, having veins run through the tendrils. Um, if I had, you know, infinite amount of time, if I had a big team working with me, I'd love to um, use um, sort of procedural texture mapping to have veins uh, that are throbbing and and uh, much more detailed but um, it's something that you would need dedicated um, uh, artists and programmers working on and uh, we're sort of on a, on a bit of a deadline trying to get this next Silver Falls game out so what I'm see that vein is a bit too big so let's go ahead I'm going to shrink the size of my brush here, and then we'll try and get some veins on here. Um, something like that. There we go. That's sort of not that nice to look at. Okay. So let's just see how this looks here. It's got a nice, happy little, nice, happy little vein here. Okay, what we're going to do is use a smooth tool now. So where where the sort of veins start sticking out, I'm going to smoothen that out a bit um, just to try and get a smoother uh, sort of, it looks more uh, organic. There we go. 
smooth that out. And again, we'll go in later and we'll reduce the poly count because you're right, it, it's uh, not a good idea to have a giant poly count. Right now, this, this is 626,000 triangles, which is an enormous amount. I suppose if you were making a PS5 game, uh, it wouldn't matter because they've claimed to have infinite polygons. I don't know how true that is, but... Uh, does anyone have a PS5? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, um, having different parts of the body have different textures um, is a great idea because it, it makes it easier to, to look at uh, the enemy and it makes them visually more interesting, so that is a good idea. Um, let's see here. I increase the strength of my smoothing tool here. Not sure what's going on here. I might switch to my mouse real quick. It seems to be doing something real funny. I'm gonna turn my wireframe on just to see what's going on. Is it? Not sure what's happening here. It's gone crazy. Let's see. It's done. It's done something funny. So we're just gonna we're gonna step away from the smooth tool for a little bit. It's being being a bit weird. Uh, but that's computers for you. So let's go ahead and save. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit that reduce brush again. As you can see, there's an, an insane amount of, of polygonal detail there. So uh, let's go ahead and just run that over, and then you can see uh, the polygonal detail. Uh, it now makes uh, more sense. And again, you can always come back and, and throw, run through it more and more. Um, you can get more into it. You can make a very high uh, poly count version, and then you can bake the normal maps. Uh, then, when you create your your lower poly count um, s m model, you can sort of put some detail back in with the normal maps. That's easier for your rendering program. Uh, I don't have a PS5, so I don't know if it's true that you can have unlimited polygons. Uh, they were bragging about that. I would love to have unlimited polygons, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that was just marketing hype or or if that's going to be a real thing. Uh, let's see here. It's a real shame. I heard some people are getting their, their PlayStation 5s when they order them. Uh, they get them stolen, which is... A, that's not... That's not cool. Don't steal things from people. But yeah, some people are receiving uh, cat food. Uh, they're receiving foot massagers and, and uh, you know, George Foreman grills instead of getting their ps5s delivered which is so that's so messed up uh and i i personally can't imagine what what sort of thought process a, a person would go through when they see something that doesn't belong to them and they they think oh cool someone just spent you know 500 600 dollars on something i think i'll take it from them uh, and to not to not feel bad about that is I, I can't personally understand what sort of mental gymnastics you have to put yourself through to make yourself think that's okay. But I, I really feel sorry for people that have had their, their delivery stolen. They didn't get their PlayStation 5 or their Xbox. So that's pretty messed up. Yeah, I still, I still use a Wii U. I've got friends that come over. We play. There's still a couple games on Wii U that we enjoy playing. I love the, uh, the gamepad. There's certain games where having a map on the on the gamepad is incredible. Uh, having an inventory on the gamepad is, is great. Uh, it's a real shame that uh, the Wii U d wasn't really uh, picked up by developers as best as it could have been. That's a real shame. But yeah, I, I still use my Wii U. I like using it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the unlimited polygon thing was just a, <laughs> just a marketing thing but it, it sounds cool but I, I mean they kind of say that every generation don't they like oh you know we'll unlimited this thing more more of that stuff what i'm really looking forward to i mean I, I don't have plans to get a ps5 or a new xbox in the future because i i work so much my entire day is pretty much working on silver falls games uh and i i really want to make the games for the switch because the controllers can do really interesting things uh and i just i just want to see what i can sort of uh, experiment with on the switch so I'm I don't even get to use my switch that much most of the time it, I, I play a game that I can play for a couple minutes at a time here and there so it's usually something like Smash Bros 
All right, so um, I'm going to start uh, trying to make my the connections of my tendrils. I want to make them more sinewy. Let's go ahead and save this bad boy right here. Uh, we're going to draw, and what I want to do is I want to have a stronger connection uh, to my tendrils here. And I'm also going to work on my mouthy bits. So we're uh, adding that. Oops, I've gone a bit funny there. I normally put a, an undo macro on my um, Wacom tablet, but this one I actually haven't plugged it in, plugged it in a while, and um, my I think that the driver updated itself, then it erased my settings, so I, I don't have the macro on here right now. Um, and I, I want to make it seem like there's sort of a thin uh, skin membrane that uh, extends out of the tendril and connects it to the body. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just extend that out a little bit more like that. And then underneath, let's build that up. And then build. And again, we can always come in and smooth things. So as you know, you have this sinewy part of the skin that extends into the body, uh, you can smooth that out. And again, there's there's pressure sensitivity on this tablet. So uh, if I push harder, push softer, uh, I get a, um, a, a corresponding um, detail on the brush here. So let's go ahead and build that up a little bit more. We'll come in and smooth it out. But the smooth tool was being a little funny. I'd, I don't feel like turning the program off and on right now. I'm just in the middle of stuff. So what we'll do is we'll invert that now. And then we'll try and make this uh, interior part a little thinner. Okay. There we go. Just like that. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, uh, when I was growing up, I I played uh, pretty much all my video games with my sisters. So uh, to me, playing video games is like a it's just a cool way to to hang out with your oops to hang out with your friends and family. Uh, my sisters and I grew up playing games like Resident Evil and and um, Silent Hill, which was really cool. So we obviously we had like you know the fun um, cute games. We played the dancing games like Dance Dance Revolution, uh, Bust a Groove, or Bust a Move, depending on your region. But yeah, we, my sisters and I really loved playing the horror games, which is uh, pretty cool. So I'll come in and smooth that, out, smooth that out a bit more later as well. So, yep, and then we'll make that uh, more sinewy like that. Like that. And yeah, which is, it's, it's so great that we can still go back and, and play old games, even if we have to emulate it, because yeah, it, brings back cool memories of, of hanging out with friends and family. Uh, and I think the more we can still keep re-releasing games, the better. Uh, because it's hard to get those those games on, on the old consoles, so I think it's great when they re-release them. Uh, and then you can play old games on new consoles again. So I want these tendrils to be uh, less puffy, uh, and it looks like they're sort of stretched uh, and sinewy like that. There we go. That's it. So that tendril is now. I'll turn off the wireframe again. Uh, there we go. That looks much. So this is again. This was earlier uh, in the sculpt. I hadn't had to put the details in, but this is more along the lines of what I want it. Oops, flying around there. This is more along the lines of what I would like it to look like. And again, with normal mapping, we could add more details like veins and, and things like that. Um, sorry, I bumped the mic there. Uh, so this monster is called an exterminator. Uh, and it's the, well, it's the titular monster in our upcoming game, um, Silver Falls Guardians and Metal Exterminators. And these guys are, are sort of metallic as well, so they're quite difficult uh, to defeat. Uh, and we have a lot, of, a lot of details that we've yet to uh, uh, release for our upcoming game. Uh, well, the acronym for, for that is Silver Falls Game. Um, there's going to be a, a couple surprises on it. We're trying to do some things that are a little bit uh, unexpected and kind of what I think is sort of just a fun uh, way to explore a different part of the Silver Falls lore uh, 
and the story. The game takes place in the late 80s, and um, it does feature some, some characters that have been introduced in the series already, but they aren't... Um, Obviously, we're, we're creating the monster now, so this monster hasn't uh, appeared in, in other uh, Silver Falls uh, stories yet. So, um, I want it to seem like this tendril is just going to be like wrinkled skin now. Uh, let's see here. And I didn't actually want this to be an elbow joint, that's just how the sculpt ended out. So, um, but I might, I might, because it's ended up that way, I might put an elbow joint in there just so it's... Uh, upsetting and different from the other tendrils which are just going to be long flaps of, of wibbly wobbly skin and I've, I've planned out uh, I'm going to use physics to animate these so these won't be uh, there will be some keyframe animation but I think it'll be more interesting to have them have the tendrils uh, physics based and wibbly wobbling around and sort of uh, trying to tickle you give you a, a little bit of a tickle to your your health bar so with this here and this fella I'm, I'm imagining um, he's real good at, at just sort of uh, grabbing things with his tendrils and then sort of sticking them down his his mouthy his mouthy bits there we go so I want the appearance of, of veins uh, stretched um, skin uh, very sinewy very taut so I can come back to that later uh, and I'm working, uh, again, um, in a symmetrical mode. So I can work on one side and then the other side will, will be copied as well. So uh, the mouth, again, uh, has not been uh, finished. It's not fully designed, but I can show you guys how far uh, it goes in. Because I've got an idea of, of um, where the player's camera will go, how close it can get to the creature. So it, the, the mouthy bit goes in about... I don't want to touch the model here. It goes in about there, so it's not not all the way uh, far. But um, in general, during during play, you'd never even be able to see that far in as well. And I'd use ambient occlusion so it gets very dark uh, as it goes uh, further into the mouth. But my idea with this fella is that um, these tendrils would be able to stretch and they would be able to grab its prey and stick them in there and give them a good old uh, happy old kiss. Yum, 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 yum. There we go. Let's see. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I love playing fam uh, uh, Mario Kart. I'm, I'm kind of terrible at it, uh, but I do my, I do what I can, but Usually I have, I have certain friends that are so good at Mario Kart, I'm kind of, you know, we start playing and I, I just sort of go in with the, do my best, but I know that against a certain friend, I'm, I, I have very little chance of winning uh, in Mario Kart. Yeah, as, as I was making this this mouth thing, uh, it I didn't mean for it to, to look like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things, but it, it sort of, uh, just the mouth part, uh, as I was sculpting it, uh, the other night, it started started turning out that way, and and I thought, well, I'm not, I wasn't aiming it to look like the Demogorgon, but it happens to have a mouth thing, and it's like, that's fine, that's not the entire draw of the creature, you know, it's, that's not everything about it, but I thought, oh, it does, does look a little bit like that, but it's not really a, not really a, a huge deal, not a deal breaker for me. Um, I actually originally wanted this guy to be um, a bit taller, this is about, about human height, uh, and it's meant to sort of stick animals in there and go yum 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 yum. It's actually still quite a bit uh, chunky. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just start uh, bringing the body in so it looks closer to what uh, I've envisioned for this this handsome fella. So we're going to start bringing him in just so. See, so I need to be careful not to mess up my tendrils up there. Bring them in like that. There we go. Yum, yum. Yes, what a handsome boy. What nice thick legs you have. Uh, 
Nice. So I might I might come back later and put some veins on that fella. Yeah, Jabu Jabu. <laughs> Man, that was that was the one dungeon in um in Ocarina of Time, uh, Jabu Jabu's belly, where I really got spun around. Well, actually, anything water related. You get to the water temple, and I don't know. People say it's not a big deal to them, but I'm thinking like, what? You must be some sort of navigation god if you don't get lost in the in the water temple in Ocarina of Time. That place is. I, I know in the 3DS version they added color coding, but I, that doesn't really change how confusing that dungeon is. Uh, anyway, this is this is all quite a bit chunky. I'm going to see if I can. Um, I'm going to try and crease it a little bit more so that it doesn't look as adorable. Again, I'll, I'll come back later and ref... Uh-oh, that's gone. That might have punched through the other side. Um, not super crazy about what just happened. I might try and smoothen that out. Oop, okay, I'm not happy about that either. Alright, let's go ahead and smoothen that out. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I, I think um, Jabu Jabu probably took me a week or two. The Water Temple, uh, that one probably took me a week or two when I first played it, Ocarina of Time. And then uh, I think it's the, um, is it the the Light Temple, is that the one where, um, that's one of the, the last ones you do as, as Adult Link. That one I was, I was unstuck on for a while. Um, and then what's, uh, there's one that was like so so scary it, it took me a while because i it had the scary music and i i couldn't uh <laughs> play the dungeon because i was scared of the music in ocarina of time um yeah anyway uh we'll come back to this guy we'll we'll do uh do some more work on the tendrils um what i'll do now is i'll i'll do a bit of work um on uh the character system in silver falls here so what we'll do is we'll work on this. Yeah, I think I think that's the dungeon. That's right. Alrighty, I'm going to just have a bit of my Pepsi here, not sponsored or anything. Just enjoying a nice sparkling beverage. Okay, so this is the system uh, I've designed for our whole series moving forward. We'll probably be using it for years and years and years for our upcoming games. Uh, and what it does, this system, uh, it's called the Silver Falls um, uh, uh, Universal Character Builder. What it does is it lets me take characters from different formats, um, drop them in there, and then it, it applies an animation system, uh, a gesture system, and it lets me control all the facial expressions. So this character's already been formatted, but I'll show you the tool here. Um, and in general, like if this this character is already formatted, but if it wasn't formatted yet, I would drop that in there. I put the the character name in there, and that would sort of when I I do everything, it'll sort of rename all the important files and all the uh, the objects. Um, if I need that character to have physics in the chest area, uh, you can have that. If the character has long hair that needs physics applied, I would um, hit that. And then this ramp lets you specify bone uh, stiffness that's, excuse me, as characters are sort of moving uh, and they're, they're wobbling around, I can sort of adjust how that works. Um, in general, uh, if I had things like hair, I'd have to reference that so the game knows to, to line things up in a certain way. Uh, earrings, bracelets, because I can also have those items be removable or hideable. Uh, I use uh, Magicka Cloth, uh, which is a cloth simulation. Uh, asset that you can get on the Unity Asset Store that handles um, a physics simulation for clothing and things like that. Um, so you have to generally specify the colliders inside the body so the clothing knows what to collide with. Um, so I've set up presets so I don't have to keep creating all the objects myself. So uh, I want to say that the, if the character has a dress or a robe or um, something that, where the entire body needs colliders, I would put full body, but if the character doesn't need colliders on a certain part of the body, I won't do that. So I can, I've specified this myself. It'll automatically set up 
the uh, colliders themselves. So I'll, let's say torso and upper arms, and then you can specify the size of the uh, colliders. So fun size, slim, chunky, uh, and extra chunky. And then uh, I can specify whether I want the leg colliders inside or outside, the arm colliders inside or outside. That's just if you want something skin tight or something that's a bit more bulky. If I've separated, um, these are just task lists, uh, task checks for myself to make sure I've, I've processed everything. Uh, and once it's ready, I can um, add a tongue. Every character can have breath effects added, so it can check the sort of the temperature of the environment, and then they can you know have cold uh, sort of uh, smoke coming out. Um, uh, I can set up the physics for um, inverse kinematics, so your character like if they fall down, they can sort of go wibbly wobbly, uh, and the IK handles are for, you know, um, characters walking. If you want IK handlers, uh, they can walk uphill, uh, step on steps, and it would adjust their legs accordingly. Um, and I also have set up here, um, if I can just sort of grab on here, uh, just for really uh, realistic lighting on the eyes, I've added this sort of cornea so that it catches light and reflects in a very particular way. So what's quite interesting about uh, this system, we'll go ahead and we'll close that, uh, is the uh, facial control system. So right now I've, I have um, one of the more interesting uh, aspects is called the um, gesture tendency. And then the gesture tendency will sort of give facial habits to the character. So say for example, uh, every one to two seconds she'll have uh, an eye twitch. And then every two to three seconds she'll have an Elvis sort of lip thing. So let's go ahead and run it and then we'll see what happens. Uh, so we'll have a look at the character here, we'll zoom in a little bit. So you can see she's doing, um, every one to two seconds, the eye twitch and um, the lip. And so every character, um, I've planned out every single character in Silver Falls has very specific um, gesture tendencies. So um, even if you have like a character um, who you have an, a 70s version of that character, an 80s, and a 90s version of the character, and a modern day version of the character, their gesture tendencies can be pretty much the same. Um, I'll go ahead and cancel that. I'll, I'll, I'll add a couple more just for fun. We'll play around with the gesture tendencies. So we'll, we'll, we'll change it to four, uh, and instead of, uh, we'll go stretch eyebrows, uh, the lower face. Um, let's go, um, ooh, uh, whatever that's gonna look like. Let's go, um, let's go upper face again. Um, upper, uh, what do we got? We got blink, uh, furrow brow. Let's do that every, uh, five to seven seconds. And then we'll do another one for the lower face, uh, lower face. Yeah. Let's do, um, uh, I don't know, kiss, kiss, right. All right. And then you can also, uh, tendency how often they blink. Uh, let's just slow that down so it doesn't interfere with the other gestures here. Oh yeah, I've I've run all this on the on the switch and it um, works perfectly fine. It has very minimal impact on running it on the switch, so it can be quite as detailed. So you can see we've added a lot of extra stuff there, and um, she interpolates all the different gestures uh, kind of smoothly. Um, you can also have different reactions to different um, uh, aspects. So uh, when uh, I'm creating um, sort of dialogue events or objects in the environment. I also assign a topic to those um, things as well. So conversation topics and dialogues have a topic, uh, and you can have the character react to different topics in a certain way. So if someone talks about something sexy, they make an innuendo. Uh, this person doesn't like innuendos, so if someone makes you know a sexy innuendo, um, she'll be angry. But if you have a character who who laughs at that sort of stuff, um, you can make them you know amused or or happy, so they can react to different. Uh, dialogue uh, things based on their character type so you don't have to hard code for each individual character during events you can have their face um, behave differently uh, so what I'll do is I'll open the uh, um, let's see um, per my perpetual emotion tester so I'm going to test some dialogue here so you have selected silver fall Sam as the computer's default voice I'm going to put uh, Clementine in there and what we will do is we'll hit speak uh, text and then she'll uh, read uh, read out the text. So right now, um, her lips are, are quite high, and I think the speech intensity is, is much too much. So what we will do is we will reduce the speech intensity, 
and instead of being you know 7.5 we'll put 0.5 in there there we go so you can see it's it's not as intense now uh, we also have um, uh, and we're back Hello. Uh, sorry, someone was using the microwave and it killed my Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> had to turn off the microwave real quick, so we're back to it. Um, so we'll, uh, I don't know how much got cut off now, but uh, we were sort of discussing uh, mouth modifiers. So each character uh, can have different um, animations when their mouth uh, is moving for speaking. So uh, each character won't look exactly the same. So what we'll, we'll do uh, with Clementine is we will um, lower the mouth uh, when she's talking so her lips will be a bit lower and this is the weight for that so i'm going ahead and um let's just mo move it up there we'll run it and then we'll see how it looks uh so i've uh, still selected clementine we'll speak and you can see now her her uh, lips are quite low uh, so the weight is a bit too much so um can we adjust that on the fly yeah, you can see uh, now that looks more natural. Her lips aren't too high and they're not too low, but her mouth is moving way too much, almost like she's shouting at us. Let's go ahead and reduce the speech intensity. And now her lips are not moving as much. So um, there's also a sort of a, a lets you modify the rhythm so that her speech speeds up a little bit after a certain number of words, the animation will speed up. So um, if one character reads a sentence out, it can look different from another sentence as well as uh, every person in real life has different habits when they're speaking. So what we'll do is, um, let's try this. Let's try uh, purse lips. All right, let's see how that looks like. Oh, we'll leave that as none for now. We'll run that. And now let's see what it looks like when she talks instead of, um, oh, did we run that? Instead of uh, lowering her mouth, we'll purse lips and then we'll see what happens, speak text. So you can see her lips are pursed a little bit now. So each character can look very different. Um, and I'll, I'll zoom in and then we can approach it from a different angle. Uh, we'll hit speak. So you can see she's uh, we're pulling her lips in a little bit while she talks. There we go. If you've ever wondered what Clementine's hat says in the 3DS, it's quite a uh, low resolution. But it says, um, that says Silver Falls. Oops. Um, let's hide the gizmos here. Yeah, and that's the dusty cactus. Um, oh yeah, there's a question here. There won't be any crossplay between the Switch and the uh, 3DS. In terms of the code linker code to connect to the other games to unlock content, uh, it's going to be the same uh, code linker system. They're going to be uh, pretty much the same game, but the Switch will have multiplayer, uh, whereas the, the 3DS is going to have a campaign that doesn't exist uh, on the Switch, so that's fun. All right. I've had a coffee sitting here. I don't know if it's cold or not, but you can see the sort of the system that I mentioned earlier uh, has um, physics attached to it. So you can see the clothes uh, have physics attached um, and the chest has, has physics attached. And then I, I can have um, physics attached to the character's bones as well. So there's uh, quite a lot that I can do with the system to make it. There's a lot. There's, there's so much to, to go through. Um, and then habit triggers as well. So habit triggers, these are scripts that are added, of course. Um, as you specify these uh, gesture tendencies, um, when uh, that uh, object is instantiated, it adds these triggers, uh, these habit triggers. So if I had, you know, if I put more of these um, gesture tendencies, then I'd have more of these scripts that are added uh, on runtime when that character is run. And of course, it's very easy now. Um, every character uses this universal format. They, uh, that means I can take this character, I can plug it into other games, and the animations will work. Um, the facial system, the uh, text to, um, to, to animate the face based on text, uh, every character will just work so I can drop them into any event. Um, let's say, hello, I do not have a PS5 it was stolen and replaced with 
a bread maker. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and put them in there. And what we'll do, let's see. Let's see here. Oh, right. Different. He already has his facial expressions in there. Uh, let's see. We'll put frown in there. How about that? Yeah, okay. Oh, it's hard to see because his, his mouth isn't uh, moving that much. Let's try to dial that back. Hello. I do not have a PS5. It was stolen and replaced with a bread maker. Ah, he stuck his tongue here. <laughs> I forgot that was a. Uh, where is that? Crooked eyebrow, long blank left, and squint long. Huh. That's in. In there we go. Uh, tongue out, upper open. <laughs> Every uh, fifteen to twenty-five seconds, I I totally forgot about that. So, uh, yeah, that's something I was testing. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you can give a character jelly bone. You can make their bones all wiggly wobbly. Um, I normally have it turn, turned off by default. Uh, let's see here. So we shrink that. Uh, those are the habit triggers. I think we got to go to... It's, it's quite difficult... Um, because when you have systems that, that uh, animate the bones with physics, it affects, it substantially affects things like if they have a watch or, you know, if they have a, something attached to their belt, it having the animated physics um, can be really negatively affected. So I actually have bone clones. That's an entire set. It's like a skeleton that's just meant to clone the position and rotation of a character's um actual uh, bones for animating so that I can still attach things and not have um, it interfere or glitch at all. So I've turned on the dynamic bones, but I'm going to be replacing that system because it's not quite um, doing exactly what I need to anymore. But when I've turned on the dynamic bones, you can see that that character, their, their spine and their shoulders uh, now uh, can react realistically. So there we go. Let's go ahead and reset the rotation on that. Wow! Oh, no! But there you go. And I think that, that makes for a pretty um, uh, realistic and interesting movement in terms of, you know, moving that character around and sticking their tongue out. And there you go. And so um, it took me probably six weeks uh, of work to get this system made, but it handles all the... Um, pretty much everything so I can plug it into all our future Silver Falls games now I won't have to redo the work on on each individual character uh, in terms of programming the programming is already already in there so that's quite exciting uh, again I'll be using that for a while <laughs> well apparently it I mean some people got an air fryer some people got a George Foreman grill that that really sucks I'd I'd be very upset but you know, Amazon said they offered to people a five dollar or a five euro, uh, I don't know, something gift card if their thing got stolen, which is like, that's not, that's not a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When the characters talk, um, generally that I try to uh, frame cinematic scenes in a way that they would in a movie. So I, I try to have the camera show the character's face and whatnot. And, and I've chosen to not do voice acting because it's it's too difficult to get regular voice actors back, uh, especially for a series like Silver Falls that is so, um, there's so much that can go on with each character um, and they can appear anywhere, they can appear and, and, and do lots of different things and, and, and interact and there can be a lot of different uh, events and scenes. It would be way too difficult to get regular actors in and so I've chosen to not have voice acting for the series. Oh, they oversold PS5 pre-orders. That's 
not real smart. You know, it would be a great uh, way to make up for it for the next PlayStation is have a pre-order bonus that's a Sony air fryer. Yeah, you can you can have that one, Sony. You can keep that, the, the, the Sony air fryer for the PS6. That's, uh, that's on the house. But, I mean, if you want more ideas, you're going to have to send some checks my way. But that one you can have for free. Um, I'll go over a couple other small things here. Uh, where did Clementine go? Actually, let's look at another character now. Uh, we've been looking at these folks for a while now. Let's go at a... Uh, let's look at uh, Wood. Wood here. I'm, I'm not sure he's fully set up, though. But uh, I was still in the middle of, of rigging this guy up. Because I have to uh, animate the hair and everything and the clothing separately. Uh, let's see here. Is this character fully set up? Oh, so check these out. These are holders, right? Um, so not... Every game in the Silver Fall series will use all of these features, but I have the features in there um, just because uh, there may be some games that will use them. So I have holders here. So I have a weapon holder right, uh, weapon holder left, uh, hat holder. So you can see here, um, the reason why I have those holders in there is because I have what are called Silver Falls uh, universal props. So this universal prop, um, it has offset positions and rotations for attaching to different points on the character. Uh, so what I will do here is I'll just run this test. Let's go like this. We'll, we'll go uh, equipment tester. All right, so for the character object, let's go to, whoa, where's my guy? Here's my guy, right? We'll go, uh, character object is uh, Silver Falls character wood. Let's see. So, what I want to put in here in my prop object is uh, let's say I'll, I'll take this axe and we'll put the axe there. That's my prop object. And I haven't used this testing tool in a while, so I don't super 100% uh, percent remember how to use the tool correctly to test it. But that's, this lets me uh, test um, the point. So if I equip the prop to the character, you can see that he holds the axe in his left hand. And, and then I would have to adjust his uh, left-handed uh, position because it doesn't uh, super fit. But let's say I want to put it on his shoulder now. Let's go ahead and put that to none. Let's remove that. Equip props to character. Uh, now he can wear the prop on his back there. Uh, let's see. Uh, prop X. You want to put it on his belt on the back. And then again, hit none. We equip the prop. So now it's uh, hanging from his belt on the back. Let's see what it looks like if we put it on um, his belt on the front. None. And equip props. So now he can hang it uh, from his belt on the front. And then, as you can see, uh, we can adjust the offset rotations and positions uh, for each uh, tether point. Uh, I've never tried to attach it to a hat because, obviously, it is not a hat. But today, it's going to be a hat. So let's go ahead and equip the prop to the character and he doesn't want to wear it as a hat because what are you a crazy person an axe is not a hat so obviously that can't that can't go there but let's see if he uh, let's see if he holds it correctly in his right hand none there we go okay so we would have to fix that because uh he's holding it backwards unless it's like a really stylish way to, to fight with an axe that i don't know about uh but mainly it's for attaching to those points there. Uh, let's go ahead and click that. Yeah, and every character uh, in Silver Falls, uh, whether it's an NPC or a playable character, they'll all have these values. Uh, and it's designed in an, in an efficient way that doesn't use up, you know, a lot of memory or, or processing or anything like that. And uh, I don't know, if someone wanted to mod a game or something, they could take the NPCs and make them function as playable characters because they all have the data in there. I mean, that's not my intention, but it's it's uh, more flexible from a developer standpoint to have all of that data in there, and then I can have more freedom with the characters. Hey, you're back. Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the logistics. There is... Uh, this is going to be a spoiler, but I mean, there's there's only a, a couple people here anyway, but there's there's one game uh, that's in development 
right now that um, we haven't mentioned or, or publicized or anything that will have voice acting in it, but it, it'll likely be uh, the only, if not one of the only games that has a voice acting in it. Um, and then again with that character creation system, I think we've got, yeah, we've got bracelet holders, earring holders, so that way if there's any sort of game that uses um, a character customizing system or a character building system, uh, all of these are already, it's an automated system that uh, puts those tether points in the right places so that way the, the player can equip uh, you know uh, different pieces of, of jewelry uh, glasses um, hat you know uh, necklace rings earrings and then it'll appear on your character uh, as it should and there you go um, cool and in case anyone is a fan of, of the Game Boy the Game Boy color game that we, we launched last month um, which is, st it's still in beta, but you can play through the entire game. We do actually have, I mean, this is just a, a silent spoiler between, between us, the couple of people that are here. Uh, Sheriff Fred that's in the Game Boy Color game, you see him there. This is, uh, Sheriff Fred, uh, in the modern day. Um, this part's actually, I don't know why that's floating there. That's supposed to be, uh, oop, okay, hold on, my cigarette box. That actually is attached there. Actually, if you have a close, if you have a close look here, I'll try and get in there. You can see that he's he's taped his he's taped his cigarette box onto his suspenders with some tape there. There you go. So he's always ready uh, for smoke. But smoking is bad. Okay, uh, don't do it. Because um, drugs are bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's he's got some in there, but they're fully. Uh, let's see. I think those are grouped together, so you can't really remove those out there. But uh, I actually had a lot of fun designing um, the box for that and making it sort of, you can see that it's it's got imperfections and shiny bits on it. But yeah, this is actually Sheriff Fred um, as he would appear uh, in, the, in the same year uh, as Three Down Stars. So he's 17 years older than he was in the Game Boy Color game. Uh, that's pretty cool. He's also uh, rocking his uh, favorite... Uh, liquor. It's Silver Courage. It's made in Silver Falls, actually. Uh, there we go. So there's Sheriff Fred. That's a spoiler. Don't don't tell people about it. That's just between us guys. Uh, and here's Butch, the the butcher. And there we go. He's got a he's got a cool belt for his tools there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it took a took a lot of work to do these these sort of um, high definition versions of these characters because I made them originally uh, for the 3DS. So, um, redoing everything from scratch. So, uh, when we do event, oh, that that's his ties being set up for physics uh, and and whatnot. So, uh, setting everything up, uh, having to to redo all the graphics and then and do shaders and add more detail to things. Um, because when, when, when the games are on the Switch, I want them to look as good as they possibly can. And I didn't want to uh, just take the, the 3DS game. So again, those, those, those are just sort of floating there while I, while I line them up. But there's Sheriff Moss there. And um, he had actually gone in and I'd even painted sort of um, the reflectiveness and the, the moistness uh, underneath um, the eyelids and whatnot. And you, you, I added these corneas to make them catch light better and... It just makes the characters look more interesting. So I'll open up a room here that's meant for, um, um, it's what I call my photo box here. So I, I won't save this room. And I'll sort of show you guys um, where I, I sort of pose characters if I need to get like cool uh, um, portraits of them. So this is um, Helen. Uh, and she'll appear in, in other games as well. She's got this cool scarf that she wears a very particular way. But let's see who else I had in here. So, um, what does Karn look like in this room? Where is he? Hello, fella. There we go. That's one of the characters I was in the background. Uh, Annalise. Let's see. Oh, what's going on here? I don't know quite what the camera 
is doing. So maybe that's appeared on a weird layer here. Nope. That's weird. That's real weird. Let's go ahead and hit that. I don't know why it did that. That's real funny. Um, but something that uh, I had to do with Annalise as well. I'll, I'll run it and see. Because uh, I had to spend quite a bit of time. Um, I wanted the metal on her bracelets to be quite detailed and realistic. I wanted the texture to make it feel like it, it was like something that you actually wore and it's a bit scratched and, and sort of weathered because you, you wear it so much. Um, but these are actually um, animated with physics as well. I'll turn the gizmos on. You can see the, um, the physics detection on there. So I'll run it and we'll, we'll see what happens. But um, obviously in the 3DS version there are no physics um, the characters just have their jewelry, and that was attached to her arm. But um, in the upcoming Switch games and any sort of future games, uh, her clothes will have physics animation. The bracelets will have physics animation. So we'll run it, and then we'll see if it behaves. Hmm. So you can see they sort of slid down her arm a certain way. Let's go ahead and uh, character. Let's turn on all the dynamic bones here, and then I'll turn off the gizmos again, and then we can sort of, you should be able to, well, you can see her arms, her clothes have um, uh, physics reactions to them. Her hair has some uh, physics to it as well. Uh, let's see here. And her bracelets do have. So what, what actually I'll do with her animator, uh, let's see here. I'll, I'll have her, I'll have her run and you might be able to see the physics of the bracelet a bit better. So it's, it's more interesting when, when you have those sort of uh, realistic animations. Uh, yeah, there you go. And it's it, it does take quite a bit of time, but I think it's it's uh, the sort of small details that make it interesting. So it looks like her, her uh, side bag was not attached correctly. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened there. So Her side bag seems to... Where did it go? Where is it now? Ah, it's down there. Anyway, that's must have been a, a weird setup process but um yeah i put quite a bit of time to, to get the leather to look um and sometimes in games you're just gonna have to make textures a little bit more shiny than they look in real life because you you're really desperate to just catch the light and to make graphics pop so sometimes things just have to look shinier um you know I'd, leather wouldn't really look that shiny in real life but um you really want the character to catch uh reflections because it's eye popping and it's interesting to look at um i'm quite happy with um with how that turned out uh, a lot of stuff you just have to manually do by hand if you didn't have the sort of the, the pbr textures and things you're just gonna have to generate them um either with specialized tool or, or do it by hand um so that's part of the the upscaling process why it's not so easy to just take a take you know a 3ds game and to drop it on the switch you have to do a lot of work to make things visually more interesting um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back to, uh, uh, working on this guy for a bit. So I guess I'll, I'll end the stream now. Uh, thanks a lot for hanging out, you guys. I really appreciate, uh, um, how much the three down stars sell? I don't think I'm allowed to, I don't know if I'm allowed to, to talk about that. I'd have to look at the the thing i don't know if i'm allowed to to say what um but it's 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 a challenge uh it didn't sell uh well it hasn't sold great yet um there have been a lot of issues with uh, glitches and things like that but um it's it's difficult getting updates pushed out on the 3ds uh, because there's there's a lot of complications on the on the nintendo on Nintendo side of things and there's there's a developer that's been spamming Nintendo with like brick break clones and it's clogging up their system and it's just non-stop if you have a look at the e-store there's tons and tons of it uh, and my my submissions are getting lost in the shuffle and I'm being told uh, that they're 
just really busy right now. Uh, so when I make updates for Three Down Stars, something that should take less than two weeks is taking months and months. Uh, so it's hard to get new games. It's hard to get updates for Three Down Stars uh, in. But I'm really hoping that once we get a few new games in, we get some games on the Switch, people might go back and try Three Down Stars on the 3DS. And if not, hey, you know, some people got to try 3DS uh, and they enjoyed it. And that's that's good enough for me. As long as we've get, we get new games out and the, the new games are selling and supporting the studio, then that's that's the end goal is to, to make enough to keep uh, making more games. So um, let's see. Uh, hey, what's up? So, um, well, no one in the uh, 3DS games, no one ever uh, explains if it's a virus or, or what's going on uh, with these sort of things. Is it... Is it spores? Is it, you know, a, a zombie thing? It's, well, it's not zombies. <laughs> I can say that much. But, um, yeah, over the next, you know, few games, you, you will be able to... Excuse me, now, now my Pepsi's making me uh, burp. Uh, over the next few games, there will be more and more details. Uh, this game that's coming up, uh, Guardians and Metal Exterminators, this will certainly give you a little bit of insight into what's going on with with some of the creatures, but not every creature has the exact same uh, backstory and answer as, as other creatures. So, um, yeah, hey, thanks for hanging out on the stream. I don't know, do you... Oh, we're, we're starting to get a couple more people come in. Um, well, uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, I'll, I'll stream again uh, in the future uh, at some point, and then uh, hopefully by, by the time we stream, we might even have this game done and submitted uh, to Nintendo. So thanks very much for hanging out, you guys. Uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. It was good uh, talking games and and uh, showing you a bit of the stuff behind the scenes in Silver Falls. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to, to you know, uh, shoot me a message on uh, Twitter, on, on Facebook. And if you want to see, if you want, want me to cover, cover other topics or you have questions about game design, just shoot me a message. I'll try and include it in the next live stream. So... Uh, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Uh, be safe and enjoy enjoy the holiday season, I suppose. All right. See ya.